you've had an unhappy marriage and uh, you've disappointed millions of people by getting a divorce, you know, you think there's more than one. You don't run off in a week. When I spoke with Lucille Ball, I was nervous. She rarely talked about the breakup of her famous marriage to Desi Arnaz, and I wasn't sure how to bring it up. She was, after all, going to be sitting right next to her second husband, comedian Gary Morton. And I assumed that Desi was not their favorite subject. But she had no problem talking about him. In fact, she was eager to discuss her ex-husband, and did so in a frank manner that was somewhat shocking to the millions who had only known them as that zany, happy couple, the Ricardos. In a moment. The great Lucille Ball. Though she grew up in a small town in upstate New York, Lucille Ball loved Hollywood. She lived in this elegant Beverly Hills mansion for over 30 years. From 1961 until her death, she enjoyed the luxuries of her legendary fortune with her second husband, Gary Morton, a producer, former comedian, and her most trusted friend. This was Gary's and Lucy's bedroom on the second floor. And this, the pink bathroom that Gary built as a surprise for Lucy when she was on location. This is also the home where she had lived with Desi Arnaz. Their work together fills volumes of scripts, all of which were stored in the house library. This is a very comfortable room. Is this your favorite? Oh, yes. Yeah. You, you know, there's always one room you live in, play games in, the plants grow better and everything. But in here we show pictures. We have 85,000 feet of Seriously, home, home movie. Let's see something. You want to see something? Yeah. Okay. All right. Something let's, called let's uh, The Fat Little Cowboy. When they starring? Were starring my children when they were, let's see, Desi was about uh, two and a half, almost three, and Lucy was four. But she, of course, was always telling uh, him what to do and pushing him around, making sure that he did it. Are yeah. they close now? Very Desi much, much closer now than they ever were. Yeah, really? Mm. Much. During their 20 years of marriage, Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball had two children, a daughter Lucy in 1951, and Desi Jr. came two years later. They were the great joy of Lucy's life. She encouraged their interest in show business, and as teenagers, they joined her in a final TV series, Here's Lucy. She often said she was a firm believer in nepotism. Lucy was so good at being funny that people forget she was also a great beauty. In fact, it was her looks that got her in the door, first as a model and then as an actress in B-movies. In 1940, she appeared in a movie with a Cuban singer who would eventually steal her heart. They were married in November of the year, and ten years later, they approached CBS about doing a sitcom, loosely based on their marriage together. They called it, I Love Lucy. Despite strong prejudice against Latin Americans, Desi Arnaz built the empire known as Desilu Studios from the ground up and gained a reputation as one of the smartest businessmen in Hollywood. There has never been a success like Lucy. She was on CBS for 23 consecutive years and won four Emmys and countless other awards. By anyone's measure, she was the queen of comedy. camera, Lucy and Ricky Ricardo exaggerated marital troubles and made us all laugh. The public thought they were the perfect match. Off camera, the marriage fell apart. In 1960, Lucy filed for divorce amidst allegations that Desi drank too much and cheated on her. America was heartbroken. So apparently was Lucy. But they managed to remain friends until his death in 1986. When I sat down with Lucy and Gary, I wasn't sure what to expect. She was 66 at the time, Desi was still alive, and the subject of her first marriage was still painful. Even I mean, when you and Desi were married, you had everything. We had nothing. He was a, a, he had his own band, and he was in a play in New York, and he was a kid. When you were married. When but we then, were first married. At the success. Then we built up right. a lot of things. Right. But, but then even when you while they were building, they would not believe that he was doing the building. Yeah. And he was doing the successful building of a very well-run empire. I was doing the acting and having the children. I, was, I had no part of it. I took that on much later. But I knew what he had suffered, really, and uh, how he did not deserve that. 
And just because he was Cuban and once a bongo player did not uh, warrant calling him any of those names. And he worked very hard and got a lot of respect for what he did, and they forgot about that. You had the success. The marriage looked perfect. It was everything. And then it fell apart. That was his problem. And I heard you were devastated. I couldn't understand it any more than, you know, for the same reason you're asking the question. It seemed like we had everything. I think people still don't understand. I don't either. Oh, I think that's past. <clears throat> it's certainly past. I think it's past. But uh, we certainly did have everything and worked very hard to get it and two beautiful children and what else can you ask for? And I think if Desi were here right now, he would agree that it was... But when we're talking about the marriage, you had said, I didn't make the same marriage mistake twice. This marriage is very different. This man is very different. I'm cute. He's I... not a loser. I married a loser before. I, he, he could win, win, high, high, high stakes. He could work very hard. He was brilliant. But he had to lose. This man's sweet. I like getting up in the morning. So was the other man sweet and generous, overly generous. But he had to lose. He had to, to fail at everything that he built up. Everything he built, he had to break down. And he still claims he's the same way. And is this marriage itself very different? Yes. Very different. Uh, we uh, have a home that is lived in. We had many houses uh, before, but we didn't have a home that he was ever in. Take care of whom here? Well, I think together we take care of one another. When she's down, I try Gary. to get her feeling good. Gary. Gary has for a long time. Long time. Tell me the truth. Well, thank you. Well, he just assumed that role beautifully and... I was grateful for it, and I encouraged it, and uh, in many, many ways, I don't think he's even aware of. He has responsibilities I think he, that he's not even aware of. Uh, when I found out the kind of, of man I had married, it takes time, you know, you're not you sure. You when you're you Not for sure. I'd only known him a year, and I, I sat and thought about it for a year, and I really didn't want to get married again. I had two beautiful children, and I was... When you've had an unhappy marriage and uh, you've disappointed millions of people by getting a divorce, you know, you think uh, more than one. You don't run off in a week. Besides, I didn't want to take a man who seemed to be his own man. I didn't want anything to happen to that um, wonderful feeling that he had, that, that, that real wonderful ego, and deflate it in any way. I didn't want anything to happen to that. Did you ever worry, you're a couple of years older, that he'd look at somebody else? Oh, I had that. I've had that. I've had that. I've been, you know, 35 You've had years. what? No, I mean... Oh, I've, that's I've, why you know. I didn't worry. I'd heard that he'd had... <laughs> I've, I've been, you know... He'd had quite a life before. You know, that's... I didn't really worry about that. No, I can't say that I did. I didn't at the time. I thought one sign of that and goodbye whomever. One thing I love about him is that he likes to take his time off he really appreciates it with his golf. He's a fine golfer and always has been. And he was, I think, quite pleased when he found out that I didn't mind his going up to the club or going to Palm Springs or wherever to play golf at any time that he wanted to. Now, from the very beginning, he always called. Nobody asked him to. He never said, now be sure and call. I want to hear and all this. Never once, and through the years, he just always has, I've always known where he was, he's always known where I was. There's been no, there have been no games being played, and I was pretty used to a lot of games. And I'm not talking about Scrabble. Do you make each other laugh? Yes. Yes, yeah. You have said, that you said, I, Lucille Ball, I don't think funny. I don't. I'm not funny. I'm not, he's funny, no. but I'm not funny. I don't think funny. I can do funny things that other people write down in detail, tell me how to do them. I really don't think funny. He doesn't. Well, she'll do what we call Lucyisms, things from a show. You know, like always says, "Oh, Lucy, that's crazy, Lucy. Look what Lucy's doing." She'll, she'll well, she'll, inadvertently, she'll, you mean at home? Yeah, she'll walk into a wall. <laughs> she'll do little things like that, or she'll uh, decide on on dinner and forget the toast, and it's been laying there. It's this big by the time it comes you out. You mean I forget the roast? No, and toast. That's what I get. Roast. The roast. Mean, I mean, get roast. Real, real life. Real life. <laughs> yeah, real life. Do you cook? Well. Well, <laughs> hockey enough. pucks, little things. <laughs> But she does funny well, things. Well, one thing I, think... I make that you like is chopped chicken liver. Best. Best. All right. I, I know my how... mother's watching, but she I... does make the best. <laughs> oh, well, I learned from your mother. Yeah. However, uh, a Lucyism. I was making chopped chicken liver. It takes 
a couple of hours to make a, a huge dish. We were expecting some guests. And I was doing fine, and I was right on time, and I tasted it and needed salt. And I, I already had it in the dish, but it wasn't too late because I hadn't put the egg yolk on the top. So I took a big salt thing, and I went like this, and the top came off. <laughs> and the entire thing looked like a snowbank. And they're practically driving in the driveway. I just didn't know what to do. So I quickly did the worst thing you could think of. I rinsed it. <laughs> now that's... So then all the salt went right straight through it. You know, it made no sense. So we went out to eat. What's her best quality and what's her worst quality? Her well, best quality is her warmth. And her, I love her warmth and her compassion for other people, her consideration of other people, her... Uh... What's the worst? I can't think of... Uh... I, I really can, Bob. I mean, it sounds... I know one. I don't uh, like you to take naps. Oh, yeah. She has a thing about <laughs> me taking naps. I, uh, I feel he left me. <laughs> yeah, I love to take naps. I don't like anyone who can take a nap. I hear that you're very influenced by Norman Vincent Peale, the po yes, positive yeah. thinker. Uh, the man himself and his thinking. What does it do? What do, you, what do you live by? What's your philosophy? It's a daily religion. I like it because it works for you every day. You can use it right now, from here to there, every morning. It's, it's, uh, I can. If I wish, I can. Lucy, after 25 years of doing the weekly series, you stopped in 1974. Then what was it like? You got up in the morning and you didn't have to run to work. Traumatic. Very. Well, for the first three or four months, I was in, uh, I was in limbo. I was just in shock. I loved getting up and going to work. Were you depressed? Listen, I was depressed. I was in such a depression that they, you know, the doctor said, you've got to take her away. You've got to find something that, that she wants to do. And there wasn't anything I wanted to do but go back to work. Why'd you leave? Oh, I'd been on long enough, I thought. And uh, I kind of always prided myself on knowing when to get off. And I felt that really I had stayed on about four or five years longer than I planned which happened because of the children's uh, coming on our show and kind of wanting them to get their wings and fly off on their own, which they did. And as soon as they did that, then I really quit. But I'd been planning it for five years. I just felt that I'd out, you know, outgrown that, that, that stage. And also, with the new shows, I began to feel a little old-fashioned. Let me ask about that. Would Lucy today, zany young woman, and, and, and really the I Love Lucy, the the crazy zany lady married to the Cuban band leader. Could that show work today? I, I can't. It's hard for me to answer now. Apparently, they're getting a little tired of the new stuff, and they are appreciative of of what they already know about and want to see again. Uh, Lucy uh, works in 77 countries that she distributes the Lucy show, and here's Lucy, and I love Lucy. So it's funny all over the world. And that's the way I feel about the humor. Lucy's humor can go on and on. There's no limit to anybody that's funny. Lucy was all... Lucy was... Quite I always funny. felt that they needed... Uh, they, uh, the public, needed a show that had a beginning, a middle, and a happy ending. Yeah. And uh, something they could depend on. And I think it's, it's become more important to them now. And that's why they're tuning in so regularly. Uh, day and night, uh, because they can depend on, they, they, they see things that are, oh, they're trying to make entertainment out of newsreels, what we see in the news, which, which is not very um, happy these days, and they're, they're building shows around them, and to me that's not entertainment. Do you watch yourself, do you watch the early Lo I Love Lucy? No, I, uh, I never have really watched them. Recently, I've caught some of them inadvertently, sort of twirling feel? the dial. Well, I feel it was a funny-looking hairdo and a funny-looking <laughs> skirt, and, I, and I, I looked like I was forever pregnant because I was either having one or just getting rid of one. But uh, I know that they were well-written, and we had a wonderful time doing them, and I think it shows. That is the essence of our comedy, those early I Love Lucy, and uh, gave me my education in... Mm. The whole thing. Did you have trouble selling those first I Love Lucy? 
No, we didn't have trouble selling them because we were... I mean, the concept. I'd heard that when you first came to CBS with the Cuban band leader and... Well, they, you know, they, they said, didn't what? want to buy Desi as my husband. Mm. And I said, why not? He is. And I said, well, Cuban, and we want an American. So we got together and went out uh, in Baudible for a few weeks to, to see how they accepted mm. us. And they did. And when I came back, I insisted. That's all. I said, I, I expected to only do the show for a year and then have some... Uh, like home movies to show the baby that I had just had, you know, when she grew up. And uh, no one who knew it was going to go on this long or get that big or that the, the, the business would snowball. My, my success was never labeled success by anyone uh, close to me. It was just go to work and do a good job, get the show out, learn how to do it and do it to the best that it's, uh, you know, the best that it can be done and teach others how to do it because it was, as I say, a, a new way of doing things. I didn't have time to think of, of, of being a success personally. If the show was doing well, that was good. It's been said that you're very tough to work for. Are you? Are you a perfectionist? A uh, perfectionist, I, I decided, is attention to detail, which I'm very proud of, and that's the way I learned my craft. That's one thing that I... Second thing I think that I'm proudest of, that I've learned my craft. The other thing that I'm proud of is that I've had time with my children and that my children are doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm and doing it successfully and one, i think gary's happy. one oh, i'm very happy i read that lucy is an overprotective mother i found that she she sometimes gets overly protective to her children she's she had them late in life and it was her whole world the children they still are they're very important and we're very very fortunate she's very fortunate they're wonderful kids but i remember when little desi was born and it was the most important event that happened in the country and i remember reading that more people watched when when Desi was supposedly born on the program, then watched the Dwight Eisenhower's inauguration, or then watched yes, they uh, happen, Queen Elizabeth's uh, uh, coronation. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what that time was like for you. I wasn't aware of, of all. They didn't tell me all that. First of all, when you have cesarean, you're not that wide awake for, you know, <laughs> the next three hours. It takes three, four days before you... Because it's a major, you know. And uh, so I was just concerned that the baby was healthy and uh, then later I found out the furor that it had caused and uh, and how nice and how happy everybody was about it and of course the fact that we were documented by our show and uh, being on the night he was born on the morning of the of January 19th and the show was that night and that could be arranged because it was a planned cesarean and it just happened to fall on a Monday you were almost 40 when your first child was born. Mm -hmm, 39. It must have been the most fantastic thing for you. Right. Do you think in retrospect that it was a, that it mattered, that it was a good thing or a bad thing, that you wanted the child so badly that you were that age when the child was born? No one warned me that, that I... Uh, I know now that I was taking a risk. But uh, my doctor at the time <clears throat> didn't uh, frighten me in any way. I found out that I was taking a risk. I heard, later. I read somewhere that when, when uh, uh, at that time, little Lucy was born, that you were so happy, you cried so much, that the doctor said he wouldn't let you have the baby because you were going to cry all over. Well, they didn't because I, they, they had to take the baby away from me because every time they'd bring her in, I'd cry and it hurt, you know, when you had cesarean. She was an unexpected cesarean and it was a, a tough operation. And every time they brought her in, <laughs> I would cry so that I'd, I I couldn't hold her. And then once I burped her, and I burped her right up out of the blanket, and she went up on the top of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to raise her up, and I didn't have the strength, and I went like that, and she went right out of the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> There's that crazy mother. But you adore those kids, don't you? Sure. I'd also heard that when, when Lucy was born, that uh, you heard about, before she was born, that you heard that you were pregnant on the radio that you hadn't known. Yes, that one I lost. But um, I got pregnant. I didn't know that I was pregnant. We went out into Vaudeville. This is when we went into Vaudeville to find out if the public would accept mm -hmm. uh, Desi as my husband yeah. before we went into the television series. And um, I wasn't feeling well when we opened in Chicago and got into New York. I thought I'd better see a doctor. I'd, I had no idea that I was pregnant because I hadn't been and we'd been married over nine years. But I went to see a doctor and he said, I think you're probably said, you've got to be put in. Well, we'll take a test. That was Thursday and I was supposed to get the results Monday. And Sunday night we heard it on Walter Winchell 
And we were each in our separate dressing rooms, and we met in the hall and said, It's true! Because we knew that if Winchell said it was true, that he had spies in the lab. And But we really found it out on the radio. I just think it's an unusual situation. I mean, it's tough enough for kids, but when they grow up, and then to have this sort of spooky thing of seeing your parents and seeing yourself born on television and all of that kind of... They're very nice. They're, they, as they got older, yeah. they start to understand yeah. the difference between reality and yeah. film. Yeah. And you've had to understand it in your life probably much more than most people, the difference between reality and film, because you had to live for many years, still do, with another, with another image, with an image of a marriage. I used it when I was unhappy. What do you mean? Well, it was always happy in our stories. It was always happy pretending. And so you'd pretend? I had to pretend, but it helped. Lucille Ball died after heart surgery in 1989, but her place in Hollywood history had been determined long before her death. Her name is now tossed about in the same sentences with Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton, and she is widely recognized as the most influential woman from the early days of television. That probably means less to her than the fact that she will continue to be watched over and over again by new generations of viewers, like all great talents, she wears well. Lucy's brand of comedy is timeless. <laughs>